Hello there, Sir from 17 once again. This is some Dark Souls 2 combat footage. A uh, couple days back I posted a video from a story on IGN and it contained this gameplay. I ended up managing to track down the full clip that they were referencing and that is exactly what you are watching right now. So we're just going to go through uh, what is here contained and we're going to watch this player take on some of the, I assume, early moments of Dark Souls 2. So, he immediately descends down the ladder into this arena, and he's ambushed by dogs and this mummified, crazy giant guy. And it's, it's an interesting encounter, because the dogs are obviously a pest, but they're the popcorn enemy. They're only there to kind of frustrate you while this guy gets cheap hits in. And if you get rid of the, both the dogs, you can focus on this fellow. But, as with most things in Dark Souls, it can be easier to say that than it is to do it and this guy struggles immensely. So, a couple of things that I notice when I watch this, he takes some big hits which look like he's blocking and a lot of the time it's because he doesn't have stamina which is the reason why he takes them. Uh, a couple of moments it does look like he's been dead angled and uh, from my experience with the game I did have a couple of questionable hits when I was blocking which I didn't quite understand so uh, I'm curious as to what that is. but. That first encounter there is the cleanest encounter with that enemy, and at the end it shows his character breathing quite heavily, you know, showing his exertion from the fight, which I don't think I've read anything about that. But he comes down again, and his lock-on kind of screws him then a little bit. I think he wanted to lock onto the dog, unfortunately he got the giant enemy, and the fight begins, and I'm wondering immediately at this point why he doesn't just lure the dogs into the out the small room with the ladder and kill them there, because he can funnel them with the door and he can kill them and then come out and fight the big guy without anybody being a pain. But he doesn't, and that's baffling to me. But this is pretty brutal. The 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 range that that guy has and the speed he's able to do that with, he's definitely going to be punishing Estus or cheeky heels. So you really need to watch out for that one. But he is persistent as he comes down this ladder once again. But it'd be so easy to strike the wall in that room, lure the dogs in, and finish them off. But second time didn't work so well. So let's have a see what he's doing. The story that IGN put forward had some really cool information that I didn't know as well. It mentioned how you can now have four rings, which is confirmed, which I wasn't aware of. It also mentioned that you could burn things at bonfires. Uh, I have no idea what the things that you do or what they are that you burn, but one of the abilities that happened when he burnt something at the bonfire made the enemies in the area tougher, so it makes me wonder if you can kind of dictate where red phantoms will be to make the game tougher or to get better spoils if you're farming, which sounds like a really cool thing and I'm hoping it's, it's, it's going to play a large role. It also mentioned in the article that you will level up through a lady. Watch this! If that is not like a King Allant bloody grab, I don't know what is, it does some wicked damage to and unfortunately, he did one of those Dark Souls rolls where in any other game it might have saved him and missed, but in Dark Souls it's like, nope, taking you away big time. But this player, I'm not too sure he understands the notion of stamina because he'll go in for attacks with no stamina, he'll have his shield up when it should really be low so he can get it back quicker. It's, it's generally symptoms of somebody who's not as experienced at stamina management in a Souls game that you're seeing, but he's probably a new player, which does explain it, and he does manage to conquer that room, finally, again. But, as I was saying, sorry, you, you will be levelling up through a, a, a woman, the equivalent of a maiden in black, which seems quite a, an interesting thing, and you're also going to be able to reset your abilities and, and change your levels and things, which is a cool idea, it's definitely more accessible for people that are wanting that. I'm not too sure how it's going to affect too much, but it's definitely going to enable you to be creative and to change your strategies mid-game. It's probably going to allow people to have one build, which will be really, really cool. So for PvP, it's probably going to be a gold mine because you can essentially get everything on one character and he can be any build you want him to be. So I definitely think it's an intelligent decision and I'm glad that they've made it. So this is the second area, the township looking area, royal woodsy kind of colour scheme and he gets absolutely decimated by these 
sentinels that seem to lay beside the trees until you disturb them, which I don't think those guys stand up unless you attack them, so you can probably completely ignore them. And this, this part of the video frustrated me a little bit when I watched it, because he doesn't move his camera at all. He just doesn't move it, and when I play personally, moving the camera is one of the most important things you can do in, in a third person action game, because your camera is your eyes, and when you're moving, you know, your camera should be moving too at all times, and it's just something that I'm so used to doing when I see other people not doing it, I don't really understand it. And there's a sequence here where he's getting shot at by archers, and he never once looks to see where the archers are. He knows they're above him, because the arrows are coming from above, but he never even looks to them at all, which I find really bizarre. And instead, he, he wakes this guy up, and he fights a really tough dude with a bunch of archers being nuisances so it's it's kind of a bad strategy on his part but he's wearing a nice piece of cloth I, I like the the flowing garments of the game I think it's gonna have some really really cool armor and speaking of later on in this video there is it's almost a like an adjusted version of the knight armor or the elite knight armor and it's red and it just looks so cool like, if that is an indication of what some of the armors are going to look like, I'm really going to enjoy this game, because it, it, it's fashion souls to, you know, like, balls deep in fashion souls at that point. And he gets stunlocked, unfortunately, by the big white knight dude. Which is going to be a familiar setting, because he gets beat up quite a lot by that, that dude. But you'll notice this is a different build, or it's a different equipment, or different accessories, because he's now a spellcaster. He's got a shield that he can't use, apparently, which is kind of strange to have it equipped. And he's using a dagger, very reminiscent, it's very Dark Soulsy. we know this, we've used it. And the dagger looks really good for stunlocking. And the PvP, I mean, we, we don't really understand the poise mechanic just yet, or how easy it's going to be to have poise. You know, we don't know how weight and poise are going to be affected with each other, how they'll complement each other. We don't even know what the breakpoints are, but what we do know is without it, the game becomes all about stunlocking, and stunlocking sucks, in my opinion. It's, it's one of those things that I actually conditioned myself not to do when I was trying to learn the PvP for the original, and when I play with great swords now, I actually play handicapped because it's not my first instinct to, to, to stun lock because I didn't do it and that's my girlfriend texting me. Well that sucks, but anyway. So this game will be rife with stun locking and hopefully we can avoid it. But. Right there, you knew it was going to happen. Casting when there's archers in the area with very low life. It was always going to be brutal. But this is the armor. Check this out, guys. There's just something about it. I don't even... I can't describe what it is, but I'm... Hello? Wow. Just Traveling all awesome. Alone. And the only thing better than that is this guy. The, the English dude who voiced well, Darth Maul, who we know he's a big fan of Dark Souls because he did a couple of interviews, I think, at E3, mentioning how he liked it. And now they've hired him to do some voice work, and he's got a fucking great voice. So, bit of dialogue with the character Pate. And he's wearing the traditional, is it the, the warrior outfit? That crazy, like, leather torso piece, which looks quite cool, but I'm not a fan of the helmet, and I never will be, because it's got those silly face bits. But... No idea what role he's going to play, but I'm excited to meet NPCs like this. I'm excited for the interactions of it. I'm pretty much excited for everything. And it's not long now, guys, so thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you could put up with my hungover throat, and you take care now.